Cross over and go and quietly tell him. The Honorable, the honorable, honorable Speaker, the Honorable Speaker, how I wish our, member, our colleague members would learn the rules of this house and avoid uh, talking us in circles or treating us to unnecessary shenanigans. Honorable Speaker, let me start as I second the motion for the adoption of the National Dialogue Committee report by saying that the establishment of the NADCO was as a result of very, very painful experiences that the country was going through following the elections of August 2022 and following this immense suffering that Kenyans were going through as a result of the skyrocketing cost of living. Those twin issues took hundreds, if not thousands, of Kenyans to the streets across the country. And the country was, thick, was tittering on the brink of total collapse of governance and indeed lawlessness. And therefore, we must thank the initiators of this NADCO process, the Honorable Raila Molodinga and the Honorable William Ruto. We can also not forget to thank immensely uh, our President Olusegun Obasanjo for having made efforts to ensure that both parties saw the sense to come to the table. Honorable Speaker, the spirit that guided the medical process was that of give and take. Just like in any negotiation process, it was a question of giving and taking. We had a raft of issues as the Azimio coalition that we had placed on the table. Similarly, the Kenya Kwanzaa side had their issues. At the end of the day, we were able to harmonize these issues and develop a framework of engagement, which guided our negotiations up to the end. I'm happy that in the face of enormous challenges, in the face of serious differences in opinion, we were able to arrive at specific recommendations touching on specific areas or thematic areas and to condense this in a report, which is the subject of this motion that is before us today. The Honorable Speaker, I want to summarize really, because 10 minutes is too short. Some of the takeaways in the report, without necessarily repeating, are one, the roadmap towards reconstitution of the IABC. The second one is the governance structure, the governance around political parties and their management. There is the issue of the audit of the elections. We have agreed on this matter to establish within 21 days upon the adoption of this report a panel consisting of three persons from each side to develop the terms of reference that will guide this audit process. I want to leave you to that panel to be able to establish these TORs. We must also, of course, talk about the World Development Fund, but more importantly, the matter of the increase of the allocation of the national revenues to the counties from the current minimum 15% to 20%. Those are some of the takeaways. But coming back to the question of the IBC, 
I keep on saying time and again that in this part of the world, the matter of elections is life and death. Be believe you, me or not. Elections in this country, just like it is in this part of the world, is a matter of life and death. And therefore the body that is to be charged with the responsibility of managing elections must be like sister's wife beyond reproach and must enjoy must enjoy the confidence of the wider majority of the populace and indeed must enjoy the confidence of the key players in the electoral process that is what informed Nadko's recommendation to restructure the IBC to restart the process of appointing the IBC commissioners and to recommend specific amendments to the Elections Act, to the IBC Act, and indeed to the Constitution. We in Article Resolve that never again should the country go back to where it was. Just few weeks or so before the establishment of the NADCO. That never again should we have a situation where a, a, an IBC would be split down the middle at the critical moment of announcing the results of presidential elections that it was never the intention of the framers of our constitution, and indeed Kenyans, when they adopted this constitution in 2010, that a body charged with the onerous responsibility of managing elections would be split in the middle at the critical stage of announcing presidential election results. The raft of recommendations in this report are, among other things, aimed at curing that very, very serious problem that can only be that that has come to be associated with only Kenya. Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Speaker, the issue of the two third gender principle, the not more than two third gender principle, has been adequately captured in the report. It was our view in Nadiko that since the time was not adequate and since there was a working group, a multisectoral working group dealing with that question, that we give it time to complete its work and compile a report which report would be treated as part of the NADCO. The report that would come from the multisectoral group, working group, dealing with the question of the not more than total gender principle within the letter and spirit of the medical report would be part of the medical report. And I want to join Honorable Chungwa in urging that group. I had a chance to meet them yesterday, Honorable Speaker. They came calling to my office and I had very, very fruitful engagement with them. And I urged them yesterday to fast track the process and submit their report with the proposed instruments to this House, even as we proceed with this process of implementing the NADCO recommendations. Honorable Speaker, there are some issues that the committee, in its wisdom, recommended that they be referred to the principles, the two principles, Honorables William Ruto and Honorable Raila Moloding. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, one of the issues that we agreed should be referred to the two principles is the matter of the Cherera 4. The four IBC commissioners that differed in opinion with the other three. Other three. It was the, in the wisdom of the committee that that matter be referred to the two principles to perhaps pursue a 
settlement outside the court process. We also agreed that on the matter of violence, including violence against the public by the police and police killings, be referred to the principles with a view to forming a system, to establishing a system of undertaking thorough investigations and holding whoever is responsible. One minute. So, Honorable Speaker, in a nutshell, as I conclude, given that the document we are discussing today, the medical report, is a negotiated document, is a consensus document, our understanding and our position is that such a document is not open to any form of amendment. And that principle also applies equally to the attendant instruments, that is the proposed legislative uh, amendments to statutes and the constitution. So with those very many remarks, I second and I urge my colleagues to adopt this report <coughs> in totality and to allow the country to move forward in one accord. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, my knowledge leader. I now propose the question, which is that this House adopts the report of the National Dialogue Committee laid on the table of the House on Thursday, 7th December 2023.